what's everybody? So today we are back working on the Silverado. Now last video you guys saw with the truck, we ended up getting the undercutting taken care of and so far it's holding up great and looking really nice. But I want to turn my focus now to the exterior of the vehicle and getting the paint corrected and looking new again. As you guys know from the start of the series, this is the 2011 Silverado. It's got black paint on it, so it's not looking the best anymore. So I'm going to go through, we're going to give it a nice wash, clay bar, and then move it into the canopy, which we built in the last video. Put it in there and attempt to give it a full buff polish and wax. So that being said, let's go ahead and move the truck over, give it its first initial bath, get it all cleaned up, and uh, then once that's done, we can move it over and start detailing it. So as you guys can see, the vehicle is quite dirty. So we're gonna go through, give it a full wash, pressure wash it all off using the foam cannon that we got from Umatic here. So we'll be upgrading our pressure washer with this foam cannon. And in order to strip all the contaminants from the surface, I'm actually using the Dawn dish soap here. Um, typically you don't wanna use this unless you're going with like a full paint corruption like we're doing today. So we'll be using this to eliminate any kind of dirt, grime, wax coatings that have been on the vehicle previously to get it all completely cleaned up. So we're mixing this with the uh, Umatic foam can in here and our pressure washer. Once that's completed, I'm gonna go through, take our clay bar here, which is actually a speed clay bar. So these are super nice, way better than using actual clay and uh, should be a lot quicker than using clay. So we'll go ahead and get the exterior of that all cleaned up to remove any kind of rail dust or any kind of other contaminants on the surface. And then we'll give it one final wash again with the pressure washer and Don dish soap. Once that's completed, we'll move it over into the canopy, get it taped up as far as like moldings and trim go. And we'll start with our buffing and polishing process. So now we got the initial wash done, we'll go ahead and move on to the clay bar. Pretty much the clay bar is just removing any contaminants from the surface. So we'll go ahead and kind of basically feel it out. You can kind of feel like a rough texture once you run across this, it should be nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and make our way around the truck. Hopefully this doesn't take as long, at least it shouldn't. I know regular clay bars take forever, but should be able to knock this one out with this speed bar a lot faster. So as you guys have seen so far, we got the truck all cleaned up and ready to go as far as the paint correction process goes. We went ahead and used our Dawn dish soap to strip the surface of any kind of wax coatings and just getting the truck overall clean. We used our speed bar, our clay bar, to remove any kind of contaminants from the surface as far as like rail dust or anything goes. And so far, the truck is good. So now we can go ahead, move it over to the carport side and get it to the point where we can go ahead, mask it off as far as like trim and stuff goes. That way we don't get any compound or anything like that on the trim. So we get it all masked up, let the paint kind of cool down. It's pretty hot outside, it's been sitting in the sun. So now we'll go ahead let it 
it sit over here in the carport, cool down, mask it off, and we should be good for our paint correction process. Now that we got the truck all masked up, we can go ahead and start the buffing and polishing process. So as you guys can see here, this is my Makita rotary polisher, buffer, whatever you want to call it. I've had this thing for a long time. I've added the 3M quick, quick connect head on there, make things a little bit easier and faster as far as the pads go. So you can see here, it's got the little thing inside there for the quick connect and it's double sided, which is super helpful. Um, now, as far as these go, you can see here, they're different colors. You have the black and the blue and the white and all that stuff. And those are pretty much just to correspond with the compounds that we're using. So the step one here is a rubbing compound. This will eliminate most of the deep scratches and swirls within the paint. Once that's completed, that'll be used with the white pads. And then you have this here, which is a machine polish. Now this is just step two. So this should eliminate any of the swirls and scratches that are from this. Um, now, I know you can, you can technically stop at this stage, but from what I've seen is you kind of get that hologram effect within the paint. So I always take it to step three, which is this here, to eliminate any other like leftover residual swirls or haziness that's within the paint. And whenever you get to this step, it seems to do a really good job. So that's got the blue cap, so that corresponds with the blue pad here. So as you can see here, we've got everything laid out. Everything's good to go. The only other thing I guess I have hidden in here is just the smaller pads that are used for more intricate, more detailed areas. But overall, I've had really good results using this Makita rotary uh, polisher. Eventually, I would like to kind of play around with the DA one or even like some smaller head sizes just to be more intricate and more detailed with it. But this, tr this setup here has always done me really well. So with that being said, let's go ahead, jump out to the carport and uh, start getting the truck all cleaned up. So I figured for demonstration purposes and showing you guys the use of the compound, we'll go ahead and do this fender here. You guys can kind of see the quality. Hopefully this camera does it justice to see what the paint looks like, but it is quite hazy. There is like little swirl marks and stuff within the paint. You might be able to see a little bit better here on the front corner section. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can get this all buffed out. Maybe you guys can see those little scratches and stuff that are right there at the top of the, the fender. There's also like three little guys right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. But using our stage one compound should take 90% of that out. And moving on to our two and three uh, polishing compounds that should make this nice and mirror-like. So I figured I'll go and show you guys just the fender here and then I'll move on and do the rest of the truck myself off camera because this is a lot of surface area and gonna take quite a bit of time. So we'll go ahead, like I said, start off with compound one and I have different rags for each one. So we'll use uh, one specific rag for the compound, another specific rag for the polishes and so on and so forth. And then once this is all completed, we can get onto the waxing process. So starting off here on the fender, we got our white pad on here. I actually had to swap this out. I don't have a quick release for the white one. I thought I did, but I don't. So we went ahead, put the Velcro one back on here for now once we get to the blue and the black we'll go ahead and do the quick release on those but we'll start here on the fender so we'll use our stage one compound put like four little dabs of it on here mark it up on the surface and then go ahead and start going now typically with this i keep it around three to 2500 rpm and then as you can see here it's got a little bit of a slow start which is nice you're not slinging compound everywhere but we'll go ahead do the fender here with stage one, make sure to wipe it down any excess compound that is on the surface, check our work, make sure there's no swirls or anything in the paint. I always have like this little light here with me to be able to look at the surface and see if there's any haziness or swirls in it that are left over. But for the most part, we should be able to knock this out relatively quickly. So I guess let's go ahead and jump into this. doing this make sure you're not keeping it just flat and you're not at a sharp angle you're not putting a whole lot of pressure in just kind of let the pad and the tool do its work
go ahead and give it a quick wipe here. You can already feel how nice and smooth it is. Now I'm getting a little compound that's setting up there. It's kind of drying on the surface. So I'll take a little squirt bottle of water and just kind of wipe it off there. But as you guys can see there, it's looking pretty good. You can see like the little scratches and stuff that are still left over from the compound. So I'll have to go through and continue this and uh, hit it with another layer. But as you can see there, it's slowly getting better. Now you guys can see here, we got step one done. Paint's looking really good. Overall, most of the uh, scratches came out, except for some like the deeper ones like you guys can see there. But the ones that were here and stuff, and the ones that were over there are now gone. There is just a slight haze to this. Overall, just like light scratching. Um, but our stage two should take most of those out. So that's what we got here is our step two. Now this is our first step of polish. So I went ahead, changed out the pad, took the old pad, set it here with the towel we were using for the initial compound. So now we have a new towel, new pad, and moving on to our polish. So with this stuff, I find I have to work in a little bit smaller of an area just because it likes to dry on a little bit faster than what the compound was. So we'll go ahead, work in a smaller area with it, use a little bit of water and obviously the towel here to wipe down any excess. But we'll go ahead, get this whole fender done now. And it should, like I said, eliminate most of those little hazy little scratches and we'll move on to step three. Oh yeah, it's getting real shiny now. You guys can kind of see there, all the little swirls and stuff came out of it. Hopefully you guys can see this. But you can see the clarity in the light itself. Yeah, that's looking really good. I'm sure we still have a little bit of like a hologram effect if we were to take this outside, especially in a darker nighttime setting. That's where stage three comes in. But you guys can see there, pretty much 90% of the swirls are out of it now compared to if you guys like move over here Let me wipe this down for you so you see like the haziness right there and then when you get to the stage two compound that we did the clarity in that i hope this camera does it justice but you guys can see it there to there so we'll go ahead continue on knock out the rest of this fender and then we'll move on to stage three Now you guys can see here, stage two is completed on the fender. It is super glassy now and it is very, very smooth. Hopefully you guys can see the difference between the door, the haziness there versus the fender there. So like I said, stage two is done. Now we move on to stage three. So moving on to stage three, we got the blue bottle. We changed out the pad to the blue one. Got a new rag as well for this polishing compound. So now this should go a lot quicker than what stage one and stage two are. Just kind of work in the same sections as before and uh, just kind of keep an eye on it to see if the swirls and the haziness is coming out. But overall, like I said, with stage two, it does a majority of the work. So this is just kind of the finishing piece. So with that being said, let's go ahead and knock this out.
clean. You guys can see there, there is like no swirls or haziness in the paint. It's just a nice reflection. The scratches that you do see, they are still relatively deep. So we can't really do anything about those. Like I said, with that one there, that one's pretty deep in the paint. But for the most part, it seems to have lightened it up quite a bit. So we got about half the fender done. As you can see there from stage two, just a little bit of haze, kind of like that hologram effect that I kind of told you guys about, to stage three, where it's just super clear, tons of clarity, looking like a mirror. You guys can probably see yourself in here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, overall, it's looking pretty good. So we'll go and finish off this fender, and we can go ahead and knock out the rest of the vehicle. Stage three is now completely done. You guys can see the clarity within the fender. Super clear versus coming over here to the top of the door. You can see like all the haziness and scratches within the paint. The one area down here where we had the three little scratches completely gone. You guys see it's super glassy looking and now we shouldn't have the hologram effect. We won't be able to know until we actually get it outside at night. And it's dark under street lights. That's when it's most visible, but the clarity on this looks really good. So now, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the truck. I'm gonna do it off camera just because it's super hot in here. It's like 95 degrees outside. So we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and knock the rest of this vehicle out. Bring you guys back and show you the results. So far we've gotten all the way around the truck and now we're to the box side. I think I'm gonna delete my Z71 stickers. I got other plans. Don't really want these on here anymore. So I guess we're gonna go ahead and tear them off. Z71 stickers are off. I think it'll be a cleaner look overall. And like I said, I got other plans. So now we gotta get a little goo gun, get that residue off and then go through buff and polish this box side. Finally, after about 15 hours worth of buffing and polishing, we got the truck done. So you guys can see here, it is super shiny. There's like no haziness or swirls in it. It looks so good. Long time, super hot out here, but overall, I'm really happy with the way it looks. Bring you guys here to the back so you guys can see. There's no like haze or anything to it. Got the bumper all done. Where the Z71 badges were, they're gone now. Got a little residue there I gotta wipe off, but overall it's looking really good. So now that we got this done, we're gonna go ahead and go on to wax. So I'll show you that next, but yeah, that took forever. So next up is our wax step. So we got my wax here, got an applicator pad and a new microfiber. So we'll go ahead and apply it on the surface. And then once it dries off, we'll go ahead, wipe it off. So I'll do this fender just to show you guys, but then I'll do the rest of the vehicle off camera. So now you guys can see there, the surface is all waxed. Looks even shinier than what it did before. Kind of see the comparison, hopefully, between the fender and the door, but looks really good. So now it's all sealed in. So now I'll do the rest of the vehicle and get this done. Finally got the truck all done. We got the wax all off of it. We got the windows all cleaned up, so it's good to go. Let's go and pull this thing out and see how it looks. As you guys just saw, the truck looks awesome. Hopefully the results show through on the camera. I don't know if the quality on this is the best to see the differences from before to after, but in person, it looks fantastic. We got the paint looking almost brand new. And I say almost just because there is some like rock chips, some deeper scratches that couldn't come out and obviously like little door dings and stuff. But for the age of the truck and the results we got with the paint, I'm super happy with it. So now that we got that completed, we got the two main things out of the way that I wanted to get done. In the previous video, we got the undercoating done and now we got the paint correction done. So now we got those two done, we can move on to the more fun stuff, the more exterior cosmetic things that I wanna to do to it. We already took off the Z71 badges off the truck and it does look a little naked, but I think it looks pretty good. And you guys let me know, should I delete the Silverado and LT badges off the side of the door and the rear tailgate? I'm kind of thinking about doing that, but if you guys have any other suggestions, let me know. So with that being said, I think we'll go ahead and end up the video here. So if you guys like this video, make sure a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, we have plenty more stuff coming for the truck as well as the other cars. So stay tuned for that. And if you guys are interested in anything that I use in today's video, I'll be sure to link it all in the description below. So you guys can try this on your own. But otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.